tonight, I am going to the Senate to work for all of Georgia. No matter who you cast your vote for in this election, in this moment in American history, Washington has a choice to make. In fact, all of us have a choice to make. Will we continue to divide, distract, and dishonor one another? Or will we love our neighbors as we love ourselves? Let's speak now uh, to Joe Siracusa, who's an adjunct professor at Curtin University. He joins me now live from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the program. So we just heard him uh, speaking there, Democrat Raphael Warnock, a black pastor who has claimed victory uh, in the Senate uh, seat. How significant is this win? Well, it's very significant. He's not just a pastor, Maria. He's, um, he's a successor to Martin Luther King's church, the Ebenezer Church. So, you know, we got this direct line. This is um, the Democrats are one step away from taking control of the Senate, which will be in charge of um, Biden's uh, judiciary appointments, cabinet appointments, and his agenda. So they've got to win that second seat. Now, the, the lady he defeated, um, Kelly Leffler, uh, said in her speech before she flew to Washington this morning that she's going to contest the election. She's going to ask for a recount. And uh, the, the major networks, of course, have already come out and said this guy has won. But he's uh, not going to win easily. His, uh, the lady he defeated is going to give him a bad time. But look, uh, this is going to be a, a very bad day for President Trump. The uh, Congress is supposed to certify the Electoral College vote, and 13 uh, members of the Senate are going to oppose it, uh, together with 100 members of the House of Representatives. So they're going to have a big contest there about trying to throw the election out. And while all this is going on, there's a mob out in the street, over 10,000 protesters have come to uh, support Trump and tell him that they also think the election was stolen. And so Donald Trump has done the impossible. He's turned uh, the Democrats into uh, a winning state of, uh, in Georgia. He's, uh, he's won it for the next guy, and he's leaving a very poor legacy. On the other hand, he's going to stay around in American politics and torture everybody for the next couple of years. He's got a lot of power, he's got a lot of money, and he has a lot of influence, okay. so he'll be around. Um Joe, let me take you back to that other Senate seat. Uh, what do you see happening there? Oh, I think Purdue is... Uh, I think the incumbent senator is going to lose, and for this reason. It's only a couple thousand votes, or maybe less, that separates them. But the, the votes that are be count, to, to be counted in the morning, in about four or five hours, are coming from uh, counties, uh, voting counties, that are predisposed to vote Democrat. These are the same people who voted for, for Biden. So if we simply extrapolate the experience of the presidential race, those counties yet to be counted uh, went Democrat the last time, so they'll probably go Democrat this time, and there's a very good chance that Purdue will be defeated. And if he wins, he's only going to win by a very, very small margin. But my bet is the Democrats sweep Georgia, and uh, Chuck Schumer becomes uh, the leader of the Senate, and Mitch McConnell is going to have to get used to playing second fiddle. And what priorities do you think uh, Joe Biden will then push through uh, with a Senate controlled by Democrats? Well, the first thing is he's going to be able to push through his cabinet uh, appointments, and then he's going to be able to push through some additional uh, uh, legislation. He's going to get that extra $2,000 or extra $1,400 for people who, got, who were left out of the coronavirus. Also, he can now make hundreds of judicial appointments without any objection from the Senate, so he can get those through. So he's in charge of his cabinet now. He'd be in charge of the judiciary appointments, and be, he'd have a, a clear road to any kind of legislation. So he'd be in terrific shape. And if he doesn't get this, he's going to have a mighty struggle, not only uh, fighting the remaining Republicans or the Republicans in the Senate, if he doesn't win, but he's going to have to fight the progressives in his own party, who want him to move farther and faster than he intends to. And there are no progressives so far in the cabinet or around him. And they're very angry with him, and they're going to make a lot of noise if he doesn't if he doesn't do what they want him to do pretty soon. So Biden's got a, a big task ahead of him. He's going to try to unify the American people, defeat the COVID uh, pandemic, and try to unify the Democratic Party at the same time. I think maybe it's a bridge too far. He probably has too much to do. But I'll tell you what, if he can get that uh, get that vaccine out there a little faster than it is, it'd be a great victory too. 
Indeed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Joe Syracuse, speaking to us from Curtin University uh, in Melbourne, Australia. Thank you. And a uh, recap of that breaking news uh, that uh, Democrat Raphael Warnock, a black pastor, has won one of Georgia's two Senate seats. That's according to the Associated Press.